This lecture will go over glucocorticoids, chromalin, and mucolytics. Glucocorticoids are used to treat respiratory disorders, particularly asthma. These drugs have an anti-inflammatory action and are indicated if asthma is unresponsive to bronchodilator therapy or if the patient has an asthmatic attack while on maximum doses of theophylline or an adrenergic drug. You should be able to recognize glucocorticoids by their ending, S-O-N-E or SOLON. Inhaled glucocorticoids are not helpful in treating a severe asthmatic attack because it may take one to four weeks for an inhaled steroid to reach its full effect. When severe asthma requires prolonged glucocorticoid therapy, weaning or tapering of the dose may be necessary to prevent an exacerbation of asthma symptoms and suppression of adrenal function. Side effects associated with orally inhaled glucocorticoids are generally local, such as throat irritation, hoarseness, dry mouth, coughing, rather than systemic. Oral, laryngeal, and pharyngeal fungal infections have occurred, but can be reversed with the discontinuation in antifungal treatment. Candida albicans, oral pharyngeal infections, may be prevented by using a spacer with the inhaler to reduce drug deposits in the oral cavity, rinsing the mouth and throat with water after each dose, and washing the apparatus daily with warm water. So this is important for patient teaching of inhaled glucocorticoids to help prevent fungal infections of the mouth. They need to, um, it's best if they use a spacer. They need to rinse the mouth and throat with water after each dose, and they need to wash their app apparatus daily with warm water. Oral and injectable glucocorticoids have many side effects when used long term, but short term use usually causes no significant side effects. Many adverse reactions are seen within two weeks of glucocorticoid therapy and are usually reversible. Side effects that may occur include headache, euphoria, confusion, sweating, hyperglycemia, insomnia, nausea, vomiting, weakness, and menstrual irregularities. Adverse effects include depression, peptic ulcer, loss of bone density and development of osteoporosis and psychosis. When oral and IV steroids are used for prolonged periods, electrolyte imbalance, fluid retention resulting in puffy eyelids, edema in the lower extremities, moon face, and weight gain, hypertension, thinning of the skin, purpura, abnormal subcutaneous fat distribution, hyperglycemia, and impaired immune responses are likely to occur. Chromalin sodium is used for prophylactic treatment of bronchial asthma and it must be taken daily. It is not used for acute asthmatic attacks. Chromalin does not have bronchodilator properties, but instead acts by inhibiting release of histamine and other inflammatory mediators from mast cells to prevent an asthma attack. Its most common side effects include postnasal drip, irritation of the nose and throat, and a cough. These effects can be decreased by drinking water before and after the drug. Rebound bronchospasm is a serious side effect of chromalin. The drug should not be discontinued abruptly because a rebound asthmatic attack can result. Chronic asthma may be controlled through a long-term medical treatment program and by a quick relief program during an acute phase. So what that means is the patient will have daily medications that they'll use to control their asthma, but they will also have emergency uh, rapid acting drugs that they can use for acute asthma attacks. Mucolytics act to liquefy and loosen thick mucus secretions so that they can be expectorated. Acetylcysteine is administered by nebulization for bronchopulmonary disorders. With one important exception, this drug should not be mixed with other drugs. When patients with asthma or hyperreactive or hyperactive airway disease produce increased secretions that obstruct bronchial airways, acetylcysteine may be administered as an adjunct to, to a bronchodilator, but these are not to be mixed together. The bronchodilator should be given five minutes before the mucolytic. Remember, bronchodilators are always the first medication to be administered. Side effects include nausea, vomiting, stomatitis, and runny nose. Acetylcysteine may be diluted in soft drinks to minimize the risks of vomiting. Antibiotics are used only if a bacterial infection results from retained mucus secretions. 
Trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole is effective for the treatment of mild to moderate acute exacerbations of chronic bronchitis from infectious causes. Please pause the video to review the questions and pick out your answers and then resume playing the video to see if you are correct. For question one, the correct answer is A. For question two, the correct answer is D. For question three, the correct answer is B as in boy. For question four, the correct answer is C. For question five, the correct answer is C. For question six, the correct answer is D.